Well, good morning once again, everybody. It is so good to see everybody here in church. I absolutely love it. Come on, give everyone a hand that's watching at home. Let's get everyone a, come on, you better than that. Let them know that you love them and you care about them. I know I've already uh, introduced myself, but I want to do it again because sometimes we edit the other part out uh, for the sermon. I just wanted to welcome everyone. My name is Eric Bucci, as I mentioned. I'm the lead pastor here, and it's an honor and a privilege that you chose to come here today. If it's your first time, we want to thank you for coming, uh, and uh, that's what's going on today. So listen, we're also in the middle of the 21 days of fasting and prayer, or prayer and fasting, and we're meeting here every day from uh, 7 to 8, Monday through Friday, and we're doing it here live, and we're also doing it um, uh, later on. You can watch it on, on demand as well, so you can come in person or watch it live on demand, which is on our website, YouTube, and Facebook. Well, let's get into what we're talking about today. We're talking about focusing and refocusing. And last week we mentioned about walking with God and what it looked like, right? And I want to let you know something, that I was going to have a new series today on 1 Peter called Unshakable, which I'm really excited about. But actually, just yesterday, I was uh, having my quiet time with God. And uh, I, I'll share with you a little bit later. I like to go in the basement when everyone's asleep and get a cup of coffee and, and sit there and, and read. And, and I, was, I was spending time with the Lord. I was getting all this great stuff. And it was just like, it was just like comforting. I don't know how, how you like, how many like to take a warm shower in the cold winter? And how does it feel so awesome? Well, as I'm reading the word, I'm spending time with God. It's such a rich time. I'm like, God, thank you I get to do this. And I felt like the Lord was telling me, show the people how to do this. Show them how to do this. And so as I was thinking about that, I feel like the Lord just impressed upon me to postpone my message on 1 Peter and, and to kind of just to help you guys and help us all to refocus and, and share with you some ways where you can get to connect with God. Can someone turn off that fan? It's a little chilly for me. Is there a fan there in the back? If you don't mind. It's a little noisy too. Thank you. Um, as I was saying, so I just want to encourage you guys how we can do this together. And I want, to, I want to just encourage you that God really wants to meet with you. He really doesn't want you to live for him. He wants you to live with him. And, and so much of religion, so much of our Christianity has been based upon performance. It's based upon trying to measure up to somebody else. And you're thinking, I can never do that. And maybe you've tried and you've tried. And here it is in the middle of a month already. You're like, I, I can't do this anymore. And so I want to encourage you today with those things. And I think sometimes uh, we use the word devotions. And it sounds like you've been put into solitary confinement. Devotions. You've got to do your devotions. And if, if you grew up in the church for a period of time, maybe you have, maybe you have not. Maybe you grew up with that word devotions. Have you done your devotions? Have you brushed your teeth? Have you flossed your teeth? And people look at doing devotions like flossing your teeth. And sometimes you, you try, right? You try real hard and, and you fall asleep or you find it extremely boring or your mind wanders and, and you're like, well, I am the worst Christian in the world. I can't even read the Bible. I know I'm supposed to read the Bible and pray, but it's boring. Frankly, it's, it's boring. I don't understand it. And, and I, my mind just wanders everywhere. I'm trying to focus on God and I know I'm supposed to pray. I know, I know I'm supposed to read the Bible but I just can't seem to make it happen. And, uh, and so this is what happens often when you have your devotional time. Maybe you struggle with that, right? And then you feel bad about it. And then you come to church and you say, have you read your Bible today? Have you prayed? No, I'm just, a, I'm just a sloth. I don't know what to do. And you feel bad about it. Or maybe you tried to read the Bible through a year. You did good for the first week and then you fell behind. You're like, I'll never catch up. And you see all these spiritual giants you see in the church or other people, they pray so eloquently. They're so wonderful. Meanwhile, you're struggling even just to, to read a couple of verses. And, and you're like, I just feel so worn out and I feel so dry. And, and, and then you come to Sunday and you're hoping some way, some place, maybe you'll get something out of a message and then you go home and then by midweek you're like, ah. I don't know if you've ever been there. I've been there. And I'm the preacher, <laughs> okay? And I want to share with you today how some pragmatic and practical ways to meet with God. But I want to share just a couple of things with you, okay? How to have time with God that works. Not devotions, but quiet time 
with God. Everything okay? All right, awesome. How to have, this is the first service. You guys look at the guinea pigs. So, all right. <clears throat> well, how do, we, how do we walk with God? We mentioned last week, Enoch walked with God and he was no more, right? And so I wanted just to remind you, because this kind of comes in with last week. We said this, we must live with God, not for God. We must live with God, not for God, because you can live for God and not live with him. And this is what's been happening in our culture where we've been wrapping around, we've been trying to help God save the world without God. We've been trying to save our families without God. We're doing it for him. And we're not with him, but we're for him. And listen, God is okay, he understands that. And we miss it that we're supposed to be with God. And I'm telling you, religion and disappointment comes when you're trying to live for God instead of with him. He's never asked you to live for him. He's asked you to live with him. It's always been God's dream from the very beginning in the Garden of Eden. They walk with God. The second thing we mention is this. When you become no more, you can become more. Enoch walked with God and was no more, and God took him. I know it's a play on words, but when you and I empty ourselves of ourselves, we can truly be ourselves because God's plans and God's ways are so much higher and so much greater than what you and I could ever do. We might think temporarily it may seem like a game, but it's not. A lot of what we do is delay gratification. But I'm telling you right now, when you're at peace with God, nothing else matters. The reason why we do all we do, right? The reason we work hard, the reason why we try to save money, the reason we try to help other people, because we want to have a sense of well-being. We want to put our, our head on the pillow and feel like I've made a difference in the world. I'm doing a good job. I'm comfortable. I'm peaceful. I'm happy. So we do all these things to try to achieve that when God is the giver of all those things. And so today I want to just to help us Talk about that and, and the power of the first. The power of the first. I'm telling you right now, God demands to be in the center and the first. And the reason why he commands that and demands that is because it's for our own good. I mean, it's like, can you imagine driving your car like this the whole time? You're not going to be able to do it. You need to keep your eyes ahead to what's in front of you, right? Well, in the same way, God wants us to look and put him first if we do. We will guide ourselves through life a lot better. And, and this is one of the most important verses, I think. I want to encourage you to memorize. Well, I don't memorize scripture. I try. It's, it's okay. It's this. Seek. Seek. That's a very, like, you're going after God. Seek the kingdom of God. First. Above all else. God first. It works. And live righteously. And he will give you everything you need everything you need not everything you greed but everything you need so don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries today's trouble is enough for today and so we talk about that now even martin martin luther king jr by the way it's just uh, i think tomorrow's his birthday and or is it yesterday tomorrow and i know the kids are off from school they're excited but they're always off from school now Martin Luther King Jr. said this, so I say to you, seek God and discover him and make him a power in your life. Without him, all of our efforts turn to ashes. Our sun rises into darkest nights. Ultimately, that's what, exactly what will happen. Without him, life is meaningless drama with the decisive scenes missing. But with him, we're able, to, notice that, with him, not for him, but with him, we're able to rise from fatigue of despair to the buoyancy of hope. With him, we're able to rise from the midnight of desperation to the daybreak of joy. Notice, with him. St. Augustine was right. We were made for God and we will be restless until we find rest in him. Well, how do we find rest in him? Well, I want to tell you to put God first in everything. Make a determination to honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you, of your produce. 
Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. When you say, God, everything comes from you. I'm going to trust you, my provision. I'm going to be generous. I'm going to tithe. I'm going to give. I'm going to be a generous person. I'm not going to demand things from people. When you have that giving attitude and put God first, something amazing begins to happen. So the Bible talks about that. Now, I want to talk about how to meet with God. Can we, can we do that? Okay, I'm going to ask my, my friends to come out here and help me out a little bit. Okay. My friends. Hey, guys. Thank you so much. How to meet with God. How do we do that? And I just want to, can I, I'm going to show you what I do a little bit. Is that all right, everybody? I just want to show you what I do. I'm not saying I'm the only, only way to do it. This is Corey here. Fantastico. Boy, I wish these guys were home with me. <laughs> my kids are not quite as quick to do things like you guys are. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. No one needs my coffee now. Yeah, no one needs my coffee. And we'll be good. All right. That, oh, look at this. You have a lamp. God's a lamp. Okay. How to meet with God. Okay. I, I want to talk to you a little, little bit about the power. Okay. <laughs> These are like the angels that are helping me have my quiet time. Okay. But how to meet with God. The power of rituals. I want to encourage you about rituals. We all have rituals. Rituals are things we do every single day. You get up in the morning, you take a shower, hopefully, right? You brush your teeth, you, you comb your hair, you get the Sandman out of your eyes. You, you maybe you do, you eat your cereal or have your Pop-Tart or whatever you do, or your Cuckoo for Cocoa Cup puffs, whatever you do. And, and, and then you go on with your day, you have a routine, and you wouldn't go out of the house without a routine. You wouldn't go to work or school in your pajamas, right? You, you, you get ready, you do something. Why? Because you want to be productive in that day. Yet, spiritually, how many of us are still in our pajamas? We got sleep in our eyes. We haven't had our first cup of coffee yet. And, and, and so I want to encourage you, some of this sounds like it's lit, litigious and, and, and legalistic. It's not. You see, God gives us structure so we can have freedom. If you pour a bunch of water, if a water truck comes to your house and drops six, uh, a thousand gallons of water in your backyard, you're not, you're not going to have a very good pool. But if you build a structure to hold the water, then when the water comes, you have something you can swim in. It's the structure that gives you freedom. We don't live for the structure, but the structure is supposed to help us have freedom. So I want to share with you a little bit about that today. Okay, and first thing I want to say is this. Don't be so hard on yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. I'm going to go ahead and sit down for a second. Don't be so hard on yourself. And so what I do normally is I kind of sit down and I try to get a place where it's quiet. I, I'm the kind of guy that I need to have quiet. I need to feel like I'm by myself and no one's around. And, uh, you know, when you have a conversation with somebody and you want to have a intimate conversation with somebody. You want other people listening, do you? And so for me, it's the same thing. So what I try to do is, is to do that. And I just want to share with you a couple things. It says in the Bible, and rising very early in the morning while it was still dark, ah, oh, <laughs> he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. Oh, come on, pastor, can I do it in the middle of the day? Sure, you can if you want to. But I want to encourage you about seeking God first. First, I'm actually going to go through a passage of Scripture in a few moments to show how to do it, okay? But seek God first. Put Him first. There's the power of the first. And, I, you know, try something. Maybe it's 15 minutes in the morning. I don't know, but seek Him first. We'll go through that. But Jesus went to a desolate place. Now, if Jesus, being the Son of God, perfect, found it necessary to get up early before everyone was driving him crazy. Maybe it's important for us as well. And look what happened. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said, everyone is looking for you. And the truth of the matter is, everyone wants to run your time and your life. And you, we have to decide, the first thing in the morning, Jesus is going to have my day. Not my kids, not my parents, not anybody for that matter. I'm going to make sure that Jesus has my day. I want to set this day up right. Now, listen, we talked about walking with God, okay? But it's good to have an established pattern before we begin our day. 
For example, these rituals, before an, uh, a, a pilot takes off on an airplane, he or she, what they do, they have a systems check. Check, flaps check, fuel check, and they go through all the systems, they turn it all on, they get their logbook out, they set the coordinates, they make a plan to reach the destination. They don't just say, okay, wherever we end up, we end up. I think we're supposed to be someplace in Florida. So we'll just go with, go, go with it. You know, God wants us to be free. No, they have a plan. They do a system check. They focus on the trip before the trip is taken. How about we focus on the day and give it to God before we go into the day? So this is what I'm talking about. It doesn't mean we hang up the phone, but we tune in to this. And so what happened? Everyone was looking for you and exactly what happened. And then he said to them, let's go on to the next town that I may preach also. For that's why I came. Now, why did Jesus go like that? Why did he go into the quiet place? You know, think about it. If you read that passage of scripture, a lot of success was happening. His notoriety was climbing. And, and you and I probably would have stayed because the going was good. But he prayed and God said, go to the next town. It's time to get up and go. So Jesus spent that time. He did it a lot. He went to that solitary place. In Psalm 63, 1, oh God, you are my God. Early I will seek you. Early I will seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Early I seek for you, God. And I just want to encourage you with that. And so how to meet with God? Don't be so hard on yourself. You're going you're gonna to blow it. I, I'm gonna you're going to blow it. You're, you're going to blow it. Thanks a lot, Pastor. How can you be so negative? Can't you be more positive? Yeah, I'm positive you're going to blow it. You are. We all do. And, and make no mistake about it. The enemy does not want you to meet with God. He wants you to meet with somebody else first. He wants you to go look at all these things. Before I got up here, I'm getting te I'm text messages on my watch saying, I'm leaving my husband. I don't need to hear that right now, right? There's always somebody saying something. So, you know, often we look at this first, and I, I'm convinced if I, if I spent as much time looking to this screen as I did praying, I would probably be, I'd be, this, I'd be the third person like Enoch that God just took up. I'd be so close to God, right? So, you know, don't be so hard on yourself, everybody. It's okay. You're going to fall asleep. You're going to miss it. You're going to oversleep. And what the enemy would say, see, I told you it doesn't work. See, I told you, you got nothing out of it. Who are you kidding here? Just forget it. You tried to read the Bible, you fell asleep. You've been reading the same verse for the last 10 minutes and keep falling asleep. And how about those thoughts you're having? Those wicked thoughts. Some, some of the most wicked thoughts have come in my head during my devotions. And it isn't always me. It's the enemy. He'll say things and put things in my mind. And, and uh, I'm telling you, the enemy will do that. It's a battle, everybody. It's a battle for this. And he does it in a way that you wouldn't even realize it. So let me say something here. Schedule a time and a place. If you don't schedule a time and a place, it won't happen. It won't happen. You've heard this before. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I mean, you can imagine you say, you know, I'll get to work when I get to work. Can you do that in the, in the real world? No. No, you have to have a time and a place. And what did Jesus do? He got up early. When he was in the Galilee region, he would go up to the hills and pray. When he was in Jerusalem, he went to a place called the Garden of Gethsemane, which was an olive grove overlooking Jerusalem. He went there often to pray and to seek God. He got by himself. He spent time with the Lord. And I want to encourage you to do the same. I want to encourage you to do the same. So schedule a time and place. If you don't have a time and place, it won't happen. My place is different places. I like to go in my basement on this 20-year-old 20, 20 couch that's falling apart that Sandra wants to get rid of. <laughs> I love it. It just fits into my body. It's dusty. It's ugly. But I like it. You know, and I had the two pillows there. And it's, it's just kinda, I just kind of morph into this thing. And I like being down there and, and, and warm. And, but I tell you, if I get up too late and there's activity in the house, I'm done. i got to go someplace else. But to find a place with God. Some of you, are, you're dating and maybe you have that romantic spot you are with your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or what have you. You know, that's kind of what it is. It's a time with God. It's a time, God, I'm going to give you undivided attention. God, I want to spend time with you. I want to meet with you, right? And then have a plan. Have a plan. I'm telling you, the word of God is so powerful, everybody. 
So powerful. Have a Bible reading plan. I'm, I'm just telling you right now, what would I encourage you to do? I've been doing it nearly since 1997. I've been doing this. I've been reading through the Bible every year. Sometimes I miss some days. Sometimes I've blown it. But you know what I found out? If I miss today, it will be there next year. And the reason I do that for is simply this. Because I know me. I know that if I pick the passages I want, I'll read the books that I like, I'll skip the passages that are uncomfortable. But when you read through the Bible in a year, what it does, it shows you the centrality of Jesus Christ from Genesis to Revelation. It, it talks about taking care of the poor. It talks about forgiving people who are different than you. It talks about all these wonderful things, and you see what God is doing throughout history. What I want to encourage you to do, and I'm looking to start something up, uh, hopefully in this week or so, is I, I do a one-year Bible. And I found, personally for me, I like going through the Old Testament, Old Testament, a New Testament passage, a proverb and a psalm. And usually every day I get hit with something. I'm telling you there's nothing else in my spiritual life that has helped me grow more and, and draw closer and more to God than spending time in his word. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you, I, when Sandra and I first got married, I, I don't know what it was, but my desire for children was not even there. I felt bad about it, but one day I was reading and praying the Bible, reading through the Bible, not even reading about children. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit said, it's time. I remember one time, we, our church was not really going that, you know, it was doing okay. We had maybe two services. Felt in the middle of worship time, just as the economy fell apart. If you remember that time when, uh, when, uh, when George W. Bush, uh, just before Barack Obama came in, the economy fell apart. I'm having devotions one day. God says, it's time to build. What? I don't want to build, God. I don't want to ask people for money. God, please, I don't want to do that. I'm happy. I felt it was time, so we started planning, and here we are today. I'm telling you, so many of my, my life has been so blessed by my time with God. It's the most wonderful part of the day. And if I do this, every, and, and, and Sandra will tell, did you have time with the Lord today? Well, honey, the fact that you have to ask me that, it's obvious I haven't. What do I do with my remote control? Okay. I'm so relaxed here that I lost my remote control. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I want to encourage you. Oops, what happened? I went back. All right. Um, I appreciate you guys being patient with me this morning. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. All right, have a Bible reading plan. I want to encourage you. I'm not saying you have to do that. There's a wonderful app. And by the way, a lot of great men and women that I know read through the Bible in a year, people that I really admire, like Pastor Craig Rochelle, great pastor, Pastor Chris Hodges, um, Franklin Graham, people like that. I mean, people like um, Tony Evans, Pastor Tony Evans, people like that read through the Bible in a year. And what it does, it just helps you. And listen, I, I, I've been through it so many times. What I like to be able to do is have like a, a, a community forum where we can go back and forth and ask each other questions. I'm telling you, you're going to get something out of it. So I'm going to encourage you to do that. And why? Why do we do that for? Well, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. How many of you try to walk in the dark? Just this past week, we changed the furniture in here. We put a row in the back there. So I usually come in here like to pray. So I walked in here, it was dark, and I walked into the chair, and I have a big bruise here. Why? I didn't have a light into my path. The Word of God is a light unto your path. It helps you see. But he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of of God. You know, Jesus, when he was in the wilderness, he was being tempted by the enemy. And, and he said, turn these stones into, into loaves of bread. He says, no, man shall live by bread alone, not by bread alone. Man should not live by bread alone, <laughs> but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And if you read that in the Greek, it says this, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that continually proceeds from the mouth of of God. In other words, God's always speaking. And, and, and Jesus was alluding to this. Why? It was for us as well. If you remember what happened, if you don't, I'll tell you the story. The Israelites were in the desert, and every morning, God would give them daily bread. It was called manna. It would arrive in the morning, and it would be like a flake-like substance on the ground. And the Israelites had to go out, and every day, they had to get that word. They could not collect yesterday's well, 
bread for tomorrow, except on the Sabbath. If they collected yesterday's bread, do you know what happened? It spoiled at night. When you rely on yesterday's word without having a word every day, you begin to spoil. You begin to get nasty with the word. You need to be keep fresh with God. Fresh bread is so important in the kingdom of heaven. And this is what else would happen. If you didn't go out and collect that manna, guess what would happen? By noon, it would melt away by the sun. I'm telling you, if you don't take time with the Lord and get in his word just a little bit, even if it's five minutes, the difficulty, the stresses, the business of the day will melt it away. And then you'll be playing catch up the rest of the day. You're gonna feel like you're not dressed for battle. You're gonna feel like you're showing your pajamas the rest of the day. I'm telling you, it works, everybody. Every word that comes from the mouth of God continually proceeds. Now, I wanna share with you a passage of scripture. I'm gonna show you how I have my devotions. Honey, can you give me some water or something? Thank you. I supposed to have my coffee with me, but I left it in the, in the back room. <clears throat> So I want to show you, just kind of demonstrate here as we, as we uh, finish up today, Luke chapter, uh, Luke 10, 38. I want to go ahead and just, if you want to go ahead and do that and turn your Bibles, whatever. But I, I find is this, I find it that I encourage you to, if you can get a paper Bible, it's great because you can mark it up and you can see where you spilled the coffee or you spilled your grape juice or whatever you do and, and you can remind yourself of it. Um, what, I, what I do right now is I actually read on my, on my device, because what I've done is I've actually downloaded a Bible called Olive Tree, and I make notes on it. Thank you, sweetheart. I make notes on it, and, uh, and what I do is like, it goes in my cloud. I do it for that reason, but I advise. But what I have to do is I have to turn the phone on do not disturb airplane mode. So I do not look at the end. If you cannot control yourself looking at this, what happened? What did he do now? All right, the best thing you can do, if you, if you can't control it, then don't do it. But paper Bible is good as well. And, and get a good translation. And what I try to do is I, I, get, a, I get a pen and paper out. I, I'm expecting God to speak to me. So I'll begin to read. And so I want to go through this passage of Scripture with you and show what I do. I'll sit down and I'll read. And let's just suppose right now, I'm like, this is what I'll do. I'll say, God, thank you for today. I, Lord, I, I ask you to open my eyes today. God, thank you that your word is a lamp unto my feet. Now, Lord... I need your word today. Would you speak to me as I read your word? See, what happens is when you read the word of God and you're a believer, the Holy Spirit comes alongside as like a tutor. And the Holy Spirit will point things out to you. And when he does that, you get familiar with the Holy Spirit's voice. It tunes you in. So the rest of the day, that same voice that spoke to you about the passage of Scripture will speak to you during the day. So now when they went on their way, Jesus entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed her into his house. Uh, that's not right. Oh, yeah, there we go. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And that's what exactly happened. There's something not right there. I'm going to go ahead and read the actual scripture. This is the reason why you need the scriptures. <laughs> Luke chapter 10, I don't know what happened there, everybody. But uh, I appreciate you guys. We're just kind of being real here today. And uh, start at 38. And, and this is what happened. So I'll begin to read this passage of scripture. And when he were traveling along, he entered a certain village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. And she had a sister called Mary, who moreover was listening to the Lord's word and seated at his feet. And so, so interesting as I read that, I says, Martha, and what is Mary doing? Sitting at his feet. I'm thinking, what does that mean? And all of a sudden, what I'll do is like, wow, look at Martha. And I'll underline that. She sat at his feet because it jumped out to me. So I continue to read. I, said, I underline it. Or what I do is I highlight it, right? So she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. So you hear this happening, right? Martha's so distracted. And then what happened? And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sisters left me to serve alone? I'm like, I'm reading this. I'm like, wow. Think about this. This woman has the, has the gall to correct Jesus? and complain that no one's helping her. Now, how many of you have ever done that? God, I'm all by myself here in this marriage. I'm all by myself here in this house. I'm, I'm all by myself in this school. I have no friends, and I don't know what's going on, God. Have you ever been there? God, where are you, right? And so as you read that, Lord, do you not care that my sisters left me to do all the serving? God, I got so much to do. I'm overwhelmed, God. I'm freaking out, God. Then he told her, 
And she said, tell her to help me, right? Tell her then to help me, God. Come on, Jesus. Lord, come through for me. And so I'm reading this passage of Scripture. And then, but the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you're anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen a good portion, which will not be taken from her. And so, guys, as I'm reading this right now, I'm sitting here, and what I'll do is I'll underline, and then I'll go back, and I'm, I'm finished. That's a short little passage. And I'll take my journal, and, and by the way, this is good to have, a journal or something you'd write. I have an electronic one as well. What I like to do is, when I spend time with the Lord reading the Word of God, you know what's going to happen? Oh, my gosh, i got to pay the bill. I forgot to register the car. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's right. I have to take my mother-in-law to the doctor or something like that. And so then you get distracted. You know what I learned to do? Have a, have a piece of paper. Write down. Write down that is. Pay bill. Do this. Write it down. And so that way you can get it out of your mind. Otherwise, you'll be thinking about the whole devotions. Remind me. Remind me. Just write it down. Have something here to write down. And so what I try to do after that point is I'll just go ahead and I'll read the passage of Scripture. And I'll say, Lord, you not care about me. So I'll read it and I'll go back. And what I'll do then is I'll, I'll, I'll read what I underlined. And I'll say, Lord, you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving. And I'll write something. I'll write, time with God is never wasted. And I'll say, God, and I'll pray, Lord. And I don't have to, don't close your eyes. You don't have to close your eyes because you'll probably fall asleep. But Lord, I want to spend time with you, God. Lord, show me, I'm so anxious about so many things, God. I want to choose the better, which will not be taken away from me, God. Lord, open my eyes. Lord, how am I, how am I busy a lot? Lord, show me what I'm doing. Lord, what can I do? And I'll ask the Lord questions. And then what I'll do is I'll write down what I, Lord, what do you want to say to me? And I'll write down what I believe he's saying to me. And by the way, you don't have to write a treatise. You don't have to write war and peace. You don't have to be uh, Anne Frank of the, of the diary. You don't have to write something that someone's going to find one day and publish it. Just put down, God help. God, I'm, you know, just write down, just be real. A couple, one or two sentences. And write down the scripture and, and, and write it. And so when I've done this, and I have a journal I have a journal almost with the whole thing where I've been writing for years and years and years of what God speaks to me through the journals. And so I'll ask God, Lord, speak to me. Now, is this the only way to go? No, but I'll underline and pray, okay? So I want to encourage you, don't be so hard on yourself. Schedule a time and place. you got to schedule a time and place. Have a plan. Have a plan, a Bible plan. You can go to, um, <clears throat> there's a Bible app on the internet called um, YouVersion. They have a bunch of plans. Get a plan. Write down, listen, journal, and then pray your scriptures. Go back and go back and pray. And say, Lord, I want to choose the better. Lord, help me to choose the better today. Lord, I want to spend time with you today. God, would you bless? Would you bless me, Father? Please, Lord, I, I'm so sorry, God, I've gotten. God, show me. Lord, what can I do to spend more time with you? Lord, show me how much you love me. And just wait, listen. And so I would say maybe, for example, I'm going to say, God, what should we do with America? What do you, God, what are you saying about America today? I hear the Lord saying, just get right with me. I'll tell you every step of the way. But what I'm asking you to do is to hear me today. I'm not going to tell you the whole plan how it's all going to come out. You're like a soldier. A soldier does not know what's going on in the war room with the military commanders. The soldier just does what, what his commanding officer says. And I'll tell you a little bit, but you do what I told you to do first. Walk in peace. Know that I'm with you. And see, these are things that you can do. And that, that's an example. I'll write that down. So... And then what I'll try to do is I'll pray. Lord God, I pray. Now, I want to encourage you. A lot of people, a lot of the, the uh, monks and other people did this in the past. And what I like to do is walk with Jesus. I'll go with a walk. And I'll just walk. Lord God, I just pray that you'd show me your way, God. And sometimes I'll even pace because I'll fall asleep. And they say, uh, psych, psych, sociologists say that sometimes walking helps you think better. So maybe you just walk back and forth. Maybe you'll find a place to walk and talk. And you can act like you're talking on the phone. Lord, I thank you so much for Cornerstone Church. 
Lord, I thank you for 2021. Lord, I don't know what's going to happen this year. Lord, I don't know what's going to happen with everyone here. We don't know what's going to happen. But I want to thank you. You have a plan. And Lord, I want to thank you that you, you placed us here at this time in history for a reason. That I'm here in Connecticut for a reason. That these people are here right now, God, for a reason. And, and that you love them all. And that you desire to reveal yourself to them. And so, Father, I pray that they would know that you're not there to beat them up because they're not meeting with you. And some believers that feel like they're, they're weak, you're okay with it. You just want to spend time with them, God. And so, Lord, I pray you would let them know how much you love them so much. God, I pray this morning, God, that they would understand what I'm sharing with them is the lifeblood of my time with you. That without me doing this, I could not stand on the stage. I'd be worthless because I spend time with you. Lord, I pray that they would know how much you love them and how you just want to spend time with them. You don't want anything from them. You just want to spend time with your kids. You love your kids. And Father, for those that are here right now or watching online that don't know you, God, they're created in your image and you love them and, and, and you want to meet them and you want to know them because one day they're going to have to face you. And the only way they can come in contact with you is through the blood of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I pray you draw them to you. Father, would you please encourage these wonderful people to let them know this is not difficult, but it's important. Let them, have, let them make the steps, oh God. Lord, let them know how much you love them. Lord, thank you that you're with me right now while I'm on the stage. That I'm not even giving an example. I'm actually praying. I'm showing these people how I pray. Notice, everybody. Excuse me for a moment, Lord. Am I going, oh, Father God in heaven, these thousands? No, I just talk like I'm talking to you, everybody. Tell them how you feel. Tell them how you feel. A little child, mommy, daddy. I mean, it's a, it warms the, the parent's heart like nothing else. God's okay with you not being precise. Who cares? He wants your heart. He loves you. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, would you please try this? If you can't sleep, if you fall asleep, then walk. Go for a walk in the woods and just talk to the Lord. Talk to him. If you're embarrassed, put a headset in. People think you're talking to your, your friends, which you are, your Lord. And just kind of walk and pray and, and spend time with the Lord and record things down. You got to have something to write things down, even a notepad, something, because the enemy will come and say a bunch of things to you. And I want to end this with a wonderful psalm. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you're the God of my salvation. On you, I wait all the day. And one thing I'm trying to work out, everybody, is I'm trying to have a, to walk with God throughout my day, not just in the morning. So I hope this has been helpful in one way or another. I don't know, I took a chance today. I just felt like the Lord said, just show them what you do. I've done this before, but I think it's, I hopefully you find it helpful. Try it for a week. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much that you love these wonderful people that you desire to meet with them. Lord, we're not competing against each other. You don't care if someone reads six hours and another person reads 10 minutes. Lord, you just want to know and love everybody. And so, Father, I pray that you draw my friends who are here today, Lord, watching online and in person, that you draw them to yourself. That they would know how much you love them and how you just want to meet with them. That's it. You don't want religious duties. You want to meet with them in Jesus' name. With every head bowing, I ask you another question. How are you with Lord? Have you given yourself to the Lord? Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? He loves you. He has better plans than you could ever imagine. If you'd like to give your life to Christ today, because one day you're going to have to face Him. And there's only one way you can see Jesus. It's not by your good works. It's not by reading the Bible or praying enough. It's not by giving your money away to the poor and helping the poor. No, it's not about that. Those are all good things. You never are good enough, but Jesus is good enough. And he paid the price for you. So what he's asking you to do is simply this, surrender to him and let him run your life. He'll be so much better because after all, he made you and he knows you. If you'd like to give your life to Christ today, I'm gonna to ask you to pray in your heart this prayer. Go ahead after me, Lord Jesus, in your heart, go ahead. Lord Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. I believe you died on the cross for me. I ask you to take away all of my sins, all the things I've done wrong, both known and unknown. And today, 
I choose to step down from being in charge of my life. Lord, I give you my life the best way I know how. Lord, take my life, it's yours. Thank you for forgiving me of all my problems and sins. Thank you that you love me the way I am. I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we believe you began a journey with God. Jesus says, come, follow me. And, and what you can do, everybody, is if you're, uh, if you're here in person, obviously you are, pull the card and, and there's a place you can check the box. I gave my life to Christ today. Or maybe you're in line. What you can do is you can text BEGIN to 94090. So what you do is you get your text out and you go like this, you go text and you, and you write the message BEGIN and then you text the number 94090. Send. And we'll help you along the way. I want to encourage you about that today. Okay, everybody? If you gave your life to Christ today, go tell someone at the front desk or meet some of the folks here afterwards. God bless you. Let's walk with the Lord. Let's walk with God in 2021. Hey, listen, I don't know how it's all going to end up, but I know, I know we win in the end, and I know God is going to help us each step of the way. Let's trust Him. But it's hard to trust Him if you're not listening to Him. It's not hard not to get, it's hard to get, get dressed spiritually. And let this be the best year you've ever had. Amen? God bless you guys. Thank you so much.